Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to answer what's up with function generators inside of Hive 2. So function generator is one of those things that's pretty cool. You're like, cool, this is a feature, how nifty, but like, what does it like do, bro? How do I use this in a track? So let's go ahead, let's go to an initialized patch. We're going to go over all the little details, what each one of these things does in here. And also the different modes, I mean everything. Let's just jump into this. We'll start really basic though. What is a function generator? Well, a function generator generates a signal to control something. So you know how like the amplifier envelope generates uh, an envelope and attack, decay, sustain, release to control how loud we are over time? Function generator, same deal, just a lot more options. We can actually take out different phases, different parts of the signal from it. So let's go ahead and just set up a basic one. So in Hive 2, these little target icons, crosshairs, allow us to take a source, in this case, a modulation source, and send it to a target. So we want to control the detune over time because I think that'd be a cool thing to control. In unison, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it some voices to detune. I'll give it five voices. And if it's off, that's no detune. That's with detune. Double click to reset a knob. And you see this orange dot appeared. And if you lost this orange dot, if you like clicked somewhere, it probably disappeared. You have to click on the crosshairs again of whatever it target it was. Now you might be going, what if I forgot? Because <laughs> that can be a thing. Well, if you come down here on the matrix A, we have a source and our target and it was automatically set up for us. If you right click, you can actually select these things. <clears throat> and there's actually a couple in here that aren't on here anywhere. So you kind of have to know. So it's worth digging through a couple of these menus to see what all your options are. We're going to focus just on this for now. But if we need to decide how much do we want this to turn our detune up. So if we wanted to turn it up a little, we can grab the dot and turn it up. And you can see this knob's moving down here. That's because this controls the same thing. This is basically just a shortcut, which is really nice, really thoughtful. So if we play this, uh, let's bring our attack up because right now it's like at zero. So it's it's going to be like be a, a little spike. We'll see that later. And our decay up. And we'll play a note. <clears throat> and we can see, we can hear that it turned up only this far. We can actually see this as well. If we come in this scope here in this uh, hexagon and go to none, in here, we have the ability to see our function one envelope, which is function one envelope right there. So we actually could see this signal and we could see the rise and the fall. So that's how fast our attack and decay are. If we did it really short, like we had before, it's so fast you can't hear it. It's just this, this quick spike. So that is the, uh, the envelope and we want to control it a lot more. So we'll just let the maximum. So when the spikes at its max, this orange line says you can be all the way up here when that's at maximum. Now, of course, if this was in the middle, we could modulate the other direction. And this is reflected here in this knob. See how it went from the middle to the other way? And you can see the orange line up here. If we go all the way positive, it actually is pushing up past the knob. It's just the mob's already at max, so it doesn't matter. This is a confusing setting because if I play a note, when it's at maximum, it'll actually be no detune, right? Because if I move it, look at this. This is basically zero and it goes up to 100%. So when this is at when this is at maximum, we're at zero detune. And at zero, we're at max detune because the knob's here and that's been defined as zero. So we're going to go the other way so that this is not so confusing. But just so you know, that's how I sort of think about it. Okay, cool. So that's the envelope and you've seen the attack and decay. It's basically how fast does this, does this thing rise? and the decay is how fast it goes down. If we change the slope, it makes them curvy. Uh, specifically, if you know calculus and you've messed with concavity, it makes it concave up or concave down. So if we go slope or in one direction, we get our concavity and we get our curviness. The other direction does the other kind of curve. It does, just does the opposite. So I'm just gonna leave that at uh, where it is. Now, th this slope thing can become important if you start modulating things quickly. I I'll try and show you an example of that as we get going here. Now, for the, now you might be wondering, what about these different modes here? Um, what about these? Also, how do you get rid of a modulation? Well, there's two ways. You can click on the knob itself and remove it because you could have a whole list here, so be careful. 
Uh, also, if you click on the knobs down here, you can actually get rid of them. You can do unassign, and you can click on the original source modulation crosshair, and you can actually get rid of it there. So there's a bunch of ways of doing it. If you can't find it, remember what you clicked, look in your matrix tab, and it'll be listed like right down there. Okay, cool. So we've just cleared it. Let's go to rise. Let's, let's set up rise, give it control. So the way rise works is, well, let's just view it in the, in the scope here. And let's turn off the volume just so we can view it. And if I play a note, we see a rise and it's pretty short. If I bring the attack up and hold it down, it's longer. And if I bring it down, it's really short. It's these little pulses. So it's controlled by how long we're spent rising. And if I click it, you notice this red light immediately appears or this orange light. It's orange. It's, so, it's the best color. It's the orange light. And so this light just indicates that this is immediately at maximum value, which is shown here. And that means that this detune will immediately be at maximum while the, the entire time this envelope is rising. And as soon as it falls, it's going to immediately go to zero because it doesn't care about the fall part, the decay part, which is controlled by decay. That's exactly what this fall one is controlled by. So we're given that option over here in function two. And that's, that's all that that does. Now, if I come over here to still, let me go ahead and remove this module. Oh, actually, let's hear it. Let's hear it first. So we play it. Just like what we expect. Still, of course, works when there is no rising or falling. Things are still. We can see when I'm not playing any notes, it's at still. It's at this, this mode. And this will instantly jump to, in this case, the way I've set it up, is it will instantly jump to maximum when things are still. Now, I'm going to remove the rise option here because I don't want things like messing with each other right now. Let's keep it simple. So if I play it, and we can actually view, we can see still jumped up here, but let's go ahead and view the envelope. And so let's go ahead and play this. So as soon as we jump to zero, we get that nice detune kind of sound. So there we go. That's what these do. And by extension, that's what these do. Move, of course, is just the opposite of still. When things are moving, we will be high. And when things are not moving, we will be low. And uh, yeah, so okay. So we know the attack and decay and slope. I've demonstrated those. It gets really interesting as soon as you jump to input and mode. So right now with input on none, this thing will just trigger. And what's a trigger? So this is a function generator, but it needs to know when and how to generate the function. So the how is sort of like our settings here, but the when is determined by a trigger. And a trigger basically says when to start over, when to do something. This is controlled by the input. And right now on the input of none, it will trigger whenever we hit a note. So you see we have triggers. It's starting over every time we play a note, and that's because we're in envelope mode. The mode negotiates how we interpret the triggers. So the input is determines when a trigger occurs. The mode interprets what to do with those triggers once they've occurred. So some of these modes consequently don't do anything special while you're in a certain input option. So right now we're on none, and none is identical to gate. Gates basically says when you play a note, send a trigger. And if we look at this, envelope and one shot are two modes. So right now, if I play this with a input being the gate, that means that whenever, whenever I push a note, a gate occurs in the synthesizer. It basically looks like a rectangle like we've seen before. And it just says note was pressed, note was let go. And it's causing the function generator to trigger because it's on envelope mode. And envelope mode says, whenever you get a gate, trigger a new envelope. Now, one shot is a bit different. One shot says, do not do anything until the decay of the current envelope has finished. So if I have a really long decay, then this decay should be allowed to finish. However, in gate mode, we see it's still re-triggering no problem. So this is really confusing at first. And the reason is this input mode ignores, it sees one shot and envelope is the same. If we go to an LFO, so we know LFOs, low frequency oscillators go up and down. And the way this really works is the function generator sends a pulse 
uh, a trigger when we cross zero. So, you know, our, we have a positive cycle and a negative cycle. When we cross zero, it sends a pulse or a trigger. And I'm going to go to LFO1, and we see it's now changing up and down. And our rate is, uh, is pretty quick right now. Let's make it really fast. You see, in one-shot mode, it doesn't care that it's really fast, that the rate is high, because it is in one-shot mode. It's going to finish its decay every dang time. And so that's pretty interesting. Now, if we go to envelope mode, it you see it, it can't even go down. The rate is so fast that it can't go down. This is when slope could matter, because if we take our slope and make it a lot steeper, it gets a little bit further down. And so we can uh, we can tune this in with our rate and get a much deeper, faster modulation um, than we would typically would be able to with a with a more linear slope. So, okay, that's what's going on. What do I have modulating this? Uh, oh, it's on still. Let's go ahead and uh, remove that and use the envelope. It's going to be a little more straightforward. Okay, cool. So now it's going to be moving all up and down according to that. Now, with it on the LFO, the one shot and the envelope obviously are very different because here it goes all the way down. And it's linked to the rate now. Um, and the one shot's linked directly to the decay. So if we give it a short decay, it will respond more and more to the faster rate. But we're guaranteed to get to the bottom, which is which can be important sometimes. Where before we had to use slope to sort of try and finagle our way down a bit further. So that's pretty cool. That's one really useful way of applying this to modulate something um, and with a function generator. And we've got a couple other options in here. For example, we have cycle trigger. And what the trigger does is basically we see that we are no longer turning off. We have no still section. That's because we're just cycling through. So every time we go through, we hit a trigger. So that's what cycle trigger does. Cycle on off. If we look at what our lights are doing here, this is quite a bit different. We actually do turn off in this case. So we don't stay on the entire time. We can actually turn off for a bit. And we see we run into some new problems, which we can adjust with our decay and our release and our rate and allow us to get to uh, higher values. The next mode, follow, is most easily demonstrated with the, just a sec here, it's in here, amplitude. So what follow does is it attempts to follow what the input is. That's, that's what it does. And so if I play a note here, that's really fast. It's, of course, still limited by the attack and decay. So if I make these, like, much quicker. And now let's say I bring the sustain up and down while I'm playing the note. You see, it is following it. That is basically what follow does. We also have a special mode. Now, this mode can be a bit confusing. So follow will follow things like if we had a long release, it's going to follow that. Even after I let go of the note. But if we go to follow gate, follow gate only follows while you're holding a note down. And we see here that I've sent a trigger and the gate just remains on. It ignores the rise. So it doesn't care. But anyways, that's follow gate, basically only when notes are playing. One thing that's confusing is why does the gate, why doesn't the gate turn off afterwards? And that can be controlled, of course, if we were to choose something different, like say, for example, the LFO and go to follow, it's going to follow the LFO. And that's why we see the LFO turning on and off here. But if we go to follow gate, it since I'm not playing a note, it doesn't care. As soon as I play a note, though, it begins to follow it. But when I stop, it doesn't. So that's a case where follow gate is demonstrated just a little bit more clearly. So those are all your modes. I'm going to go back to envelope mode for now. And you've seen some of the inputs here. Uh, let's go ahead and just cover the rest of the inputs. So one that I found particularly interesting was these down here, alternate, random, and constant. Uh, let's start with alternate because it's just beautifully apparent what it does. As soon as you see this, so if I play a note, 
And right now, uh, what are we controlling this with? The envelope output. So this envelope output's controlling this D2 knob. And let's turn our attack and our decay up to something a little more reasonable. Now, if I play a note, one note is affected by the other note is not. So you can see alternate effects every other note. If we go from max to min, max to min. If we go to random and we view random, uh, that's just, just gonna be random. Every time we play a note, we get randomized. So this will jump to just random values. Got a little audio pop there. If we go to constant, it's gonna behave consistently. It's going to do exactly what this says every time, no difference in behavior. So this just generates, this is somewhat similar to gate in the way I sort of see it. We also have the ability to link this to MIDI, of course, so we can be velocity sensitive, like be soft. Versus loud. Velocity is like how hard you hit the key. So let's make this a bit longer and we'll hit our envelope soft. And you see nothing really happened. We didn't trigger the gate. A trigger, a big trigger was not sent that caused things to change, if that makes any sense. But if I hit a note hard, we begin to bring this up and have it be affected. Uh, similar things go, I don't have a way to demonstrate pressure right now, but you could do um, after touch, I believe is what this is. Key follow is uh, if you hit low notes, If I this is also easily shown here if we go to key follow. High notes are cause it to go up as you can see. Low notes will cause it to go down. And so it, it sort of dials the effect up or down according to your keyboard. Or the high notes or high notes or low notes. Gate is just the just like what I was saying before. On off, you play a note, it's gonna send an on and then it'll turn off. Uh, control A and B. Now I know B stands for breath. It's a certain continuous controller. This is specific to your DAW, but if you go in to wherever your CCs are, uh, these are the list of CCs, continuous controllers. The in this case, we have control B and control A, which are specific uh, in here. I believe they're like 11 and 13 or something like that. Um, and these are linked to the MIDI standard. So if this is something you're interested in, uh, you can look in here. I'm sure it's somewhere on the list just to is where I'm looking right now. Uh, but anyways, yeah, you could check it out. I know the one is for like a breath controller. Controllers that have, if you have one, they're really cool if you play like a wind instrument. Uh, now we've already seen the these a bunch in the scope. Function one envelope, function one rise, still envelope fall move. So we can actually control those. If you are on the function one and you use like for example the envelope to control it, uh, you're gonna get some really weird behavior, especially if you go for like something really short. Uh, some of them just don't appear to have any effect. If we go to something. If we change our mode, for example, to like a loop, like a cycle kind of thing, and let's go ahead and view our envelope output. Do, 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 function one envelope. We are now modulating extremely fast. And so here, changing our decay can affect this. We can also change this dramatically with the slope. See, with a linear slope, it can't get quite all the way down. But if we change the slope, we can. And uh, you can get some cool modulation here. It's kind of nice because it's like a light, a light crispness, a light distortion. It's not as aggressive as some of the other things, like a hard clipper, for example. So anyways, if you choose these options, that's going to be really interesting. It kind of makes sense to pick options from example, function generator 2, because... Uh, these will be independent, so you'll be able to control the attack and decay sort of separately um, as, with the cycle trigger. So this is one mode that could be kind of an interesting mode to do if you do the trigger. If you do envelope, uh, the, the behavior will be way less dodgy, but it may not do anything. So just some interesting things. Try them out. Now, sequencer shape A, B, C, and D are references. You can see they're popping up to right here. So we see we have our sequencer shape a, B, C, D. I'm not going to go into these right now. We're going to do a different video for these. But that is basically what this controls. So if we come in here and adjust the shape or something, and we'll just make a couple adjustments here. 
to sequencer shape A, because that's what we're on. And we'll turn it on and go to the scope and bring our decay and our slope down. And we'll go from that to follow. Now it's following our shape here. And we can see, we can get some really intricate looking things. So we can use it to the sequencer to drive our function or the sequencer shape. So these are the shapes. If you actually go in and where is it? It's in here somewhere. Sequencer gate and sequencer mod. We come in here, we have an ARP sequencer and that's in here. So let's go ahead and go to those. But anyways, you can see you have four of these. But if we go up to our sequencer gate, we have a gate option up here. And we also have a mod option down here. If I go to sequencer gate, and let's just say we turn some of these on, and we also, there is a uh, ARP button. We were, we're just gonna hit play here, so it plays through when we hit a note. And so you can imagine gates on, off, on, off. If we go to um, sequencer gate and we go to sequencer mod instead, we can actually send in specific values. If you wanna be like really particular. So you see, oh, some on, very on, not on at all, and you're able to control with the mod instead. So you can go with this whole shape concept here. Probably should be in follow mode if you wanna take advantage of this, or you could come into the ARP sequencer tab and really begin to mess with things with gate in the mod. And keep in mind, you have two of these that can be driven by like separate things, and they can control different things in the synthesizer. So you can imagine the possibilities beginning to open up. Uh, here's another one that's uh, you may not know where this is if you're not used to hive to hive yet. That's the vibrato LFO because you might look and you're like LFO one and LFO two, but where's this like vibrato LFO? But if you go down to keys and we come in here, vibrato LFO, and it's got a rate and a delay, which is basically how long it takes to fade in, and you actually have these controls directly linked into the oscillators themselves. Let's go ahead and view the scope. And it's also still in follow mode, so that's what it looks like. Um, if we bring the rate up, you can see. We get some pretty awesome sounds. You can also see it has to fade in with a delay that's higher. So when we push a note, it goes to zero and will fade in. So that could be a really cool effect. And keep in mind, you've got your attack and decay here, attack and decay, to reel these effects in and sort of give them hard limits. I have them very slow, or not very slow, very fast right now, so that basically this is free to do whatever it wants. Uh, okay, so we've done that, done that. Mod one, mod two. So the LFOs are obvious, the amplifiers are obvious, and the mods are obvious, uh, to me at least. Let me go ahead and just show you. Here's our amplifier one and two. These settings will control that mod. These are special envelopes for modulation. So they're sort of like baby function generators. And then we have our LFOs, which we've been using actively throughout this entire video. Let me just show you the um, the mod one so that we, the mod and the amplifier are identical. Just the amplifier module is gonna be a bit problematic if you don't want your sound, the volume of your sound to be affected. That's the reason the modulation envelopes exist. So if we bring this up and uh, we'll bring our sustain up and play a note. And what do I still have connected? Something is still connected somewhere. Oh, okay. I've got my uh, sequencer on still. So let's go ahead, let's turn that off. Thinking here about the function generator. Okay, so now I've got it all set up. I've changed it to envelope and I was like, this shouldn't matter. And it, it didn't because it was the ARP sequencer. But there we go, we've got it all set up. And if we make this, for example, longer and our sustain up and we'll make our mod one and we'll make it a uh, follow again because we need it to follow what mod one is doing. And you see it hit the decay and sustain. Let's just bring the decay way down. Let's bring the sustain off. So it's basically just a pluck and we'll bring the release down. Well, a, a pluck with an insanely long pluck attack time. We'll bring the attack way down. So that can be really handy. Again, we could use the amplifiers, but then we're gonna start changing our sound along with this. 
which we may not want to do. If you've got this hooked up to the volume, it's kind of a silly use for it in some cases because your amplifier envelope, we're kind of duplicating controls here. Uh, but anyways, hopefully that gives you some ideas. Now, this is just a video of like what this stuff does. There, Application-wise, this can get wild really fast. And I'd like to point out, you've got a second slot here in the matrix. So you could set up your function generator. You could take multiple outputs, control a whole bunch of things at the same time, just begin to move things around. Like let's, let's go ahead and do that right now. So let's, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a sequencer. Let's stick with the mod envelope. I'm gonna take the rise. I'm gonna leave this and follow. And the rise will control the cutoff. Sure, what the heck? I'm just gonna move this around, turn this up. And with the rise on mod one, let's instead change this to gate and this to envelope. Bring the attack up. And instead of rise, uh, let's go ahead and do this with, this is the thought process, right? So let's go ahead and do this with envelope instead. Bring this more down, bring this up. Let's bring our release way down. This is going to be a bit silly, uh, I think, because we could use the, the BPM from an LFO and uh, get some that could be a little more sequenced. But hey, what the heck? Instead, we could set this up to be controlled by the sequencer shape. And we could set this to follow. And now we're taking advantage of this shape. And we've still got it hooked up to the detune, which is kind of a nice effect. I like this so far. Uh, let's go ahead and hook up the function generator over here. We'll make this one for moving since we have a lot of movement here, but this movement is connected to the function generator too. So we'll set this up to have like somewhat a uh, decay, attack decay, and we'll grab the move. And I don't know, what should we control? Let's control the resonance. And we don't want this to get too crazy. So we'll bring the resonance up just a little bit. And it's kind of nice because now when we hit a note, a new note, the resonance will be triggered uh, by this the whole time this is moving. Let's bring the decay down so we have the resonance a bit longer. And that's pretty cool. So there's a quick example. I mean, I'm just sort of going for whatever here. Let's toss some effects on there. Uh, we'll toss a chorus on there and a reverb. <laughs> If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.